Hi everybody. Today we're going to continue working on our ZX81s, ZX81s, and Timex Sinclair 1000s. Today I'm going to work on number one. As we saw previously that the screen was okay. The keyboard is iffy questionable, <laughs> obviously. And there was nothing else wrong with it. Now, what I could do with this one is I could order another keyboard for about 15 bucks, wait a few weeks to get to show up here. Or I could show you how to fix this. So I'm going to try to show you how to fix this. We'll see how it works. Because the issue really is that it's just broken up. And because it's broken up, it won't reach that anymore. But we can make it reach it. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to remove the two connectors right here. I'm going to attach them to some ribbon cable and put the ribbon cable on there. That way the ribbon connector will be looser and further up so that you can then plug it into the keyboard. Then I'm going to also add 16K into it because having 16K internally is really nice. So that's what we're going to do. If you hear noise in the background right now, that's my coffee pot brewing. And it just decided this is a good time to fill the cup. It's nobody going to the bathroom. That's actually just the coffee pot. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this connector here. I got the idea of doing this from the Frankenpooter because the Frankenpooter has the connector removed and he extended it out so I thought to myself why not and then we'll fix this too. So let's clear our work area and behind me. Now to remove these two which is these two right here in the front what I'm going to do is add some solder to them and then use the solder sucker to remove it. The reason I'm going to add it is there's not much solder on this right now. And if there's not much solder on it, the solder sucker has nothing to grab onto. So let's just zoom in. That should be a little better. And yeah, just want to make sure it focuses up. I get out my favorite smell, the flux. Got my solder right here. Take off my glasses so I can see up close. And now I'm going to do my best not to block things, but if I do, I apologize in advance. Make sure I'm still on camera. Get a little bit of flux on there just for. And we just start adding a little bit of solder. Add a blob to each one. Then the other one is right here. Alright. Now I've added solder to each one of them. I'm going to pause the camera while I unplug my soldering iron and plug in my desoldering iron. I like having them both on at the same time because I've already melted a cord doing that. So, we'll be back. Alright, so we're charged, or er, charged, we're heated up now. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to put this on this, solder right there, and suck it out. Once it warms it up. When you push down on the plunger to recharge it, you should take it away from the circuit board so that you don't push solder back up. You see that was a splash when I first turned it on. Or when I first charged up the spring. Every now and then I push it down again just to try to get the solder to any that's in the tip to come out. See you've got a splash right there. I'm not sure if you're seeing that. But that was a splash of solder that came out. And another one. And always look at your board when you get done. Just to make sure you didn't drop any solder anywhere. Call the bridge or short. 
Looks like we may have gotten it all out of here, so let's see what we got now. Put my glasses back on. Let's see, are these loose yet? Hey, a little stuck. It's going to need a little bit more attention. Now what I want to do is I actually want to use the soldering iron. I don't know if I can do it with this. I don't know if I can. What I want to do is I want to heat up the solder that's still in there just a little to get it to let go. I don't think I can do it. Ooh, it's getting hot on my fingers. Get in there. Let's see if I can see it a little closer. Maybe I can see which one is actually hanging up. The one on the end right there is hanging up still. And that right there. I'm going to try to suck out the one on the end. I think that one is just got a lot of solder in there. Yeah, it did. All right, let's try this one more right here. Maybe I can get this one out too. Be careful, it's coming apart on me here. The little springies are starting to come out, so I'm gonna have to get the soldering iron. So I'm gonna shut this off, I'm gonna switch the soldering iron and loosen it up and go that way. Because what's happening is the little spring connectors are starting to slide out, and I don't want them to come out. So I'm gonna pause this and we're gonna do that. Alright, so the soldering iron is now heated up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go in here and I'm gonna heat up each little dot and pull. I'm not going to pull too hard because I don't want to pull those pins out of the connector. I just want it to get it to let go. You can feel them letting go as you're pulling and you can also feel the heat just so you know. It is, does get hot. Almost there. Who is sticking still? Somebody's still sticking a little. Right there. There, almost got it all. Hot, very hot. Right, I got one still sticking there. Where are you at? You're right here. Oh, this is not looking, you're pulling up a trace on the other side. You're not supposed to do that. Leave the trace alone. There we go. Alright, see what was happening is it's trying to pull them out. And I didn't want to damage anything doing that. So, but they're still in there, so that's good. Alright. Now, yeah, what it was starting to do is starting to lift up a trace, too. Actually, no, it wasn't. It wasn't a trace, it was just solder. All right now the other one I'm going to do the same way. So using the solder sucker helped get them. See how this one's going a little easier. Might be able to do a little better with it. Let's see if I can get a pair, a screwdriver, and just put it here as a slight pry. Maybe I can do it better without burning my fingers. Let's see. Can I get you in there?
Now it looks like fingers are the better way to do it. Heal the burn. Almost. These two right here. You. And you. And you. And you. And you. Got him. Alright. So yeah, see another one I had to get that out so that the pins didn't get destroyed, which they didn't. Just all in there. Nice little connection, see? I want to make sure they stay in there. Alright, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to solder wiring in that. We'll do that next. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to solder. And I'm going to break out the barrel of C-clamp. Some of you may think I'm crazy using a C-clamp, but it actually works really well. Because it's so heavy, once I put something in it, it doesn't go anywhere. See that? Just holds it in place so I can solder to my heart's content without anything happening. Now I'm going to figure out where my pin 1 is, or pin 0 in the case of this one. That's going to be pin 0. And I'm going to take, this has got 5 connectors on, I'm going to take and count off 5. Somebody got themselves a loud muffler. Alright, so I got five wires. And I'm going to go, let's say that long gives me plenty to work with. Don't just stop me scissors. There they are. What I'm going to do is. Keep myself a little clean here. My hand gets in the way. I apologize ahead of time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to solder it so that I keep looking off screen because I have um, number two here. Number two as in Tommy Sinclair 1000, number two, not number two as in Potty Mind. I'm just keeping track of what is one and zero. So if I'm looking at it this way, my sister, where am I at? Just want to be sure I'm looking at it the right way. Yeah. Alright, so if I'm looking at it this way, yes, I had it right. Looking at it this way, this is 0 through 4. I'm going to put the red one on 0 and the other ones on 1 through 4. Probably fast. I'm going to fast forward through this so. I won't talk too much while I'm doing it. You won't miss out. All right, so there we go. Not perfectly pretty, but very functional. So we got that, and then we'll be soldering that onto the board itself. Now I'm going to do the other one the same way. I'm going to turn the camera off for this one just to get it done so I don't waste a lot of camera time, and we'll be back. All right, so I'm back, and I've got my glue gun here. What I'm going to do with the glue gun now that I've soldered these on, and the observant among you may notice that I put the red wire on the wrong end, so i got to keep, I can remember which way that goes. I'm going to use the glue gun is I just want to put some hot glue right along here so that there's no tension on the solder connector and they don't move. If you happen to hear music occasionally while I'm doing this or just a random really loud beat, my office slash studio is right next to a bagel shop here in western Pennsylvania. and. Back in the 80s, early 90s, or back in the 80s, starting in the 80s, people would have alarms in their cars, and they get out of their car and you hear it go beep beep, 
as they turn their alarm on and sometimes their alarm would just go off for no reason and you'd hear horns beeping and stuff like that. They've gotten smarter and if you live anywhere in the United States in a city or maybe even some small towns, you'll know how they got smarter. Now instead of setting an alarm in their car when they get out of the car to go inside of a small store or a restaurant to pick up some food or just to go get out of the car and talk to somebody at their house, instead of setting an alarm, they just turn on their music and they turn it on real loud. That way, I guess, as long as they can hear the music, the car hasn't been stolen. And if the music goes away, then the car's been stolen. So it's an, it's an alarm for them. It lets them know that somebody's messing with their car because, well, maybe the music will go away. Or maybe somebody will go out and say, this beat and this music sucks. And I'm going to turn it off. And that's a warning to let them know that somebody's messing with their car. So anywho, as I'm moving around, I'm not watching the camera, so I probably went off camera and you saw some nice white space here. Uh, what I did is I added some hot glue just to hold the wires steady. It's not like there's going to be any kind of strain on them. I just don't want them moving around when I'm connecting the, key the keyboard to it and have them short. So I'm just going to glue them. Now they're going to dry, and once this are dry, once they cool and harden, I will strip the ends here and I will then attach them to here. And then I'm going to go into doing the 16K mod. So I'll pause the video while this cools and I'll strip the ends and glue them back on. Then we'll go from there. And I want to say thank you to my beautiful wife Heather for letting me have her really old glue gun. I don't know why it's brown. I guess it was brown glue. Though they have glue with glitter and stuff, it could be that. But it works. You know if you leave a glue gun on long enough it turns the glue to liquid and just pours out and that stuff burns your hands when you get it on you? Anywho, let's pause the camera for right now, and we'll come back after I've done soldering these. Alright, so we're back. Um, what I ended up doing is, I took some pin headers, and soldered them, and then soldered the wires to them, instead of trying to force the wires down in there. And then I put hot glue on that, just as a strain relief also. I like using hot glue a lot, because that's what they do in the Cleco Atom. It's like loaded with hot glue, and I've gotten used to it. So no, those are done. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the RAM upgrade. So I'm going to greet the parts for that and then I'll show you how that's done. Alright, so what I just did there is I took some ribbon cable and I soldered them to D1, D2, D3, and D5. And now what I'm going to do is I will remove the ROM, the RAM chip here, the 2K RAM. Actually, this is a ZX81, so it's a 1K. Oh, and I realized I gotta remove, no, I just noticed that, I gotta remove this, or do I? Do I, do I, do I, do I? Yeah, I have to remove it, darn. Alright, I gotta remove this one. It's gonna take a little bit longer, I'm gonna have to remove this one and put a chip in it, I think. Let's see. We'll see what happens. I'll come back. Alright, what I was going to do is, since this requires a full size socket and the 1K doesn't have that. What I was going to do is remove that socket and put another one in. But I realized, you know, it's a lot easier for me to just suck out these four holes right there. And I've already did this before with another one. Cut off the, that end right there and just put in two more pins. It won't make a difference to it. It won't care. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that. And let me just make sure I got that camera. I'm going to trim those two off so that it's just those two pins on each side are going to go in there. And the fascinating thing is, only three of them are used. That one's not used. So, here we go. Alright, so what I did is, I took that little piece and I soldered it in place to extend that socket. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, if you want to make perfect things, you can make perfect things. I am more into the fun of actually doing things. Then what I did, next thing I did is I took a 62256, which is a 32 byte, 32 kil kilobyte RAM chip. I bent up particular legs that are necessary to hook to these wires. And I'll post a little copy of this just so you know how it works. Now this gets set in here. These get bent up because they don't connect to the 
pins that are on the motherboard, you, they connect to the wires. So what I gotta do is I gotta make sure I put this in and none of the pins are bent up. They all go in the nice little holes. And let's straighten them up a little bit. They got a little bent when I was straightening them out, I guess. Like when I was bending it up. I may end up blowing up camera for a second for this, but let's just see what I can do here. Got those on that side. I'm making sure I'm not getting any of the legs sticking up. Alright, they're in. See what I did? It's in there now. It's nice and tight and snug. And I soldered that in the back there. And I put a little piece of black tape on the back just to protect it. So that it doesn't touch any of these little sharp edges. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder these on here. And again, on my diagram I wrote down what colors I'm using. So I know which one goes where. And I pre tin the wires to make it a little easier. And now I'm just going to a little magic smoke on there. Put a little extra solder on this and pick these up. Well, and as I said in a number of videos, I am not an electrician by trade by any means, as you can probably tell. I'm a software designer and a jack of all trades. But you don't have to be an electrician to be able to do this. You just have to be able to understand what you're doing and do it. I bet if I went to college for a little bit to learn how to solder better, I could really improve my soldering skills. But personally, I just want to get by. That's all I want to do. So we go. I don't like that yellow. The yellow is not connected very well. Let's reattach the yellow better. I've had people tell me, oh, I need to get a better soldering iron. You need to do this, you need to do that, and you know what? Six bucks at Walmart. When it fails, I get a new one. Six bucks at Walmart. I don't do this enough to require spending hundreds of dollars on equipment. A hand solder sucker. Two of these for 11 bucks. My electronic solder sucker was, I think, $12. Both of them from eBay. Or it might have been Amazon. The solder, $2.50. The flux, I have no idea where I got this stuff. Uh, <laughs> Lowe's? I don't know. It's probably for use for using um, copper pipes. I don't care. It works. So there we go. We're all hooked up there. My keyboard adapter is all hooked up there. My wire is good. I'm going to take a piece of tape. Where's my scissors? Don't ask. Oh, here my scissors over here. I'm going to take a piece of tape. And I'm just going to put this right here just to secure this so it doesn't bounce around. It should not get, have any problems being loose in there, but I just want to make sure it doesn't bounce around. So we're hooked up there. Now what I have to do is I have to look at this. I'm going to do that next. I'll go ahead and clean my table off and we'll come back to that. Alright, so we're back here. I cleaned the table off. Here's the cover. This is the old double-sided tape that used to hold it in place. And this is a mess. Still got some stick to it, but yeah, that's coming up. Get rid as much of this as we can. And what I'm going to do is... Make sure there's nothing in back of here. I don't need anything there, like a little bump or anything that causes it to get in the way. See, looking at this, I'm just studying the things here. I don't see any damage inside, so I'm going to be pretty confident this is fine that the damage was up in here. What I was going to do is, first off, I'm going to trim off the excess now. We'll just get this thing cleaned up. If you look at this, you want to, even though it's been cut many times, you want that to be just like that, okay? And that to be just like that. And then we're going to 
cut straight across to get clean. And then we need to cut this little piece over here in the middle. But to do that, it's easier probably to use this than to try to get the scissors in there. Just gotta be careful doing it, so I'm gonna pull it off for a second to the edge here. All right, so we did that, and I'll hold it so you can see it better. You see, I trimmed off the end, got the end nice and clean. Get this out of the way, that's trash, get that out of the way. Bring it back here. Make sure there's nothing down here that's gonna like sit on the keyboard and cause it to have a bump. Now what I got is some double-sided sticky tape here, and I'm going to just apply it basically in an outline. Do you want to cover up the little slot there because that's where the membrane goes through to hook into the computer. And I'll just put it straight across like this. Now this you may think, where do you buy double sided sticky tape or why do I have this? I might. This is from, again, here we go with Millie's tip of the day. This is from, I'm going to fix that one. Storm windows. The plastic storm windows you put up the you know, the plastic you just put up on your windows because the windows are drafty. They come with a roll of tape. Everyone does. But yet they come with like three times as much tape as you're ever going to need. And I've got, after winter time, I've got like ten rolls of that tape. And now am I going to throw that away and go buy double-sided tape? Or am I going to use double-sided tape I already have? Who cares if it came in a storm window pack? Again, hints from the like hints from Heloise as a life hack for you, okay? Just like the younger generation, they love their life hacks. Oh my god, life hack! Life hack. I'm like, did you know that my grandmother knew the same thing that you think is a great life hack? So, there you go, yeah, life hack. Take a wet washcloth and put it in your hand, and you can open up a jar real easy. Duh. You need somebody on the interweb to tell you that? So there we go. Got this ready to go on. I'm going to slide this in here. Into the hole. Line it up. Press it down. And she will stay there. Forever. I'm going to try to pick it up. Now I have yet to test this keyboard membrane. I'm assuming it's good. It could be bad. But I'm going to assume it's good because it's kind of hard to damage this without it actually showing damage. And I don't see any damage on it. And I removed the membrane myself because I pulled it off because I wanted to have that as a little display when I first set up my office here. You know, I should take this and trim this one, this excess plastic off the rest of the way so it's not in my way. And again, on the other one, see the excess plastic right there? So it's going to be a lot easier to put this thing together now using the cables I've done. So let me pause this. I'm going to clean up the table. Again, I like a clean spot. And we're going to do this. Alright, so now we're back and we're ready to put this together. We're going to assemble this. That's going to be the easiest way to do this. Probably like this right here. I'm going to take the membrane up. And I'm going to just Try to see if I can slide this in carefully. I don't want to break it again. Okay, I believe I got it in there right. And I believe. Am I doing this wrong? I'm doing it wrong. I got to flip this thing over the other way. Alright, let's see what I did wrong here. I think I may have made a mistake. I'm going to go off camera and figure this one out. Alright, I had to go off camera for a moment there because I realized that I had to look at something. I realized I wired that one backwards and my, con my metal contacts were never going to touch the membrane. So I had to twist that one. I had to actually... Look at another board just to be sure. 
So what I did then is, and I just reminded myself, I have to make a change on this. Um, what I did is I take a piece of, well, some pieces of cardboard to make them so that they're right height. And I put it on there, and I use that as a brace to hold the membrane while I slide it in. And that works really good. Now, as I just said, I have to make a change on this. I forgot about that jumper there. See that? Well, you may, may not see that jumper. See that jumper that says, me what does it say? L1 versus L2? It's set for 1K. I need to set it for 2K for it to respond correctly to this. And to do that, I'm going to have to take my ram socket back out. Or my ram chip, not ram socket. Come on. You can do this. I have faith in you. I'm not going to unhook you from the keyboard. You're staying connected. There, get you out of the way there. All right, so I'm going to turn off the camera again. I keep going off the camera because sometimes I have to get close to see what I'm doing here. And this is the view you get if I get close to see what I'm doing. See? My bald head. You don't want to see that all the time. And contrary to popular belief, I don't think it's very exciting watching somebody solder continuously when you get the idea. So, as I said, pause, come back. All right, I'm back again. So I removed the jumper for L1 and put it on L2. This issue one board's a pain in the neck because it's all hand drawn. On an issue two, you got lots of room to do things. See that? Issue one, you don't. Is this an issue two or issue three? It don't really matter. This ain't a hand drawn one like this one is. All right, so now we're back to putting it together. We flip that over there. Just want to take a look and see how my wiring is being handled over there. Wire is good. Nothing's touching anything, right? So you can see here, I'll hold it up so you can see, get an idea. All the wiring is good there. Nothing's touching. Now I need to put in little screws. get a screwdriver. I get a Phillips, not a screwdriver. So, we put one right here. And the other one goes right there. Like such. Now they are in. Then we have the base which goes on. Now the base gets two small screws down here, just like on the inside. And there's three big screws up here, but I only have two. I'll have to dig in my bucket of bolts when I get to the next what I'm going to repair. So I'm going to use a small screw up here. It'll work. You can use small screws up here. You just can't use small screw or big screws down here. And I don't have any rubber feet for this one. I'm going to have to get some rubber feet. Yeah, see, that one just didn't even grab. It just floated away. Let's see what we got here. Let's see if I can find a screw. All right, I'm just going to look at Frankenpooter, but Frankenpooter don't have any screws on it, unfortunately. Otherwise, I'd be able to grab one of them. Frankenpooter is a mess. It really is. No, I don't appear to have any extra screws, so I'm going to have to dig in my bucket of bolts to find screws that fit this. But for now, I'm just going to wipe her down and put some feet on her. I ain't got no feet. i got to get some feet, too. So I got some rubber, rubber feet. i got to get some for these other guys. So let me wipe her down.
break out the Windex. The retro computer's best friend, Windex. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over to the, t the desk and hook it up to the monitor slash TV slash... Well, there's no more slashes. And we're going to see if she works. I'm assuming she will, but you never know. Maybe I ruined it. The exciting conclusion of episode three or part three of the TS-1000 Repair-a-thon. Sorry for the delay in getting around to doing this one. I've been working on some Atom things. I'm building power supplies for the Atom, external power supplies. And I've got like a hundred, uh, I've got like ten to make right now, ten or twelve. Among other things I've been doing. Besides the fact it's springtime and I've been working on the Mustang. We got a 2014 Mustang, beautiful Mustang. Solid black, really nice. And last Christmas we were decided to go for a ride to go show my one-year-old daughter the Christmas lights. And that's when Rudolph decided to run across the road. Suffice it to say, Rudolph died. And he just like mangled the front end of my Mustang. Crushed in the radiator support, busted the radiator, the fiberglass bumper went poof, everywhere. So I've been rebuilding it. I had to tear it all apart and put a new radiator support in, a new radiator in, pull up all the bad bumper stuff. I got a new bumper on it. I got a new grill. I got to get a grill surround to hold the grill. And then I got to get some of the top plastic that holds everything together. But she's on the road and she's cool. I'm going to take her for a ride this week to New York. She's a little banged up. She looks a little rough for the wear because, because she's a solid black Mustang. Solid black. The only chrome on it is the horse in the back. That's it. Solid black Mustang. She looks pretty cool. And with her front end beat up a little bit, and I gotta get new. How dare you, Mr. Camera, decide in the, me, in the middle of me telling my fascinating little story that you're gonna run out of juice and I have to change the batteries. Anywho, the hood's all mangled up. But she's a black Mustang, and she looks really tough. Especially, she looks very intimidating when I'm behind somebody, and they look in the back, and all they see is the black Mustang with the bright lights just pointing at them. And now when they look in the mirror and I'm behind them, they see the black Mustang with the bright lights pointing at them, and the hood all crushed in like it's going to kill her. And they get out of the way. Then as I pass them, they see me go by, and they see the bright yellow baby on board in the back window, and my daughter waving, Hi! <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, enough of my rambling. I'm gonna go get this set up and we're gonna see what we got. Alright, so I've got it over here at the table or at the desk, plugged in. As you can see, it works. I just wanna show you. Oh, to power it off. Or power it on. If this is still running at only 2K or 1K, you would get the K prompt on the bottom immediately. If it's 16K, it takes longer because it's got to initialize the memory, so you'll see that. So we got 16K working. The reason why I'm telling you to look at the K pump instead of the keyboard is this. My keys are wonky. It's an eight, that's a seven, that's a nine, that's a... See, I got something got mixed up. <laughs> I'm pressing a zero and I'm getting a six. I'm pressing a three and I'm getting a nothing. I'm pressing an S and I'm getting an F. So one of my keys got twist it around I'm trying to find certain ones that that's an eight instead of a space so one of the wires in there is off so I got to pull this apart and check my wiring and put it back together so after I figure that out I'll show you what I made a mistake on uh, but basically what I got to do is I just got to sit down and I can compare what I got to what the regular wiring is on the other board and figure out which wires I mixed up I have a feeling it's the one that I had to twist. I think I did. I made a mistake on that one, so I may have to rewire that one. So I shall let you know that in a second. But we're working. Other than the fact that the keyboard is well, that's a D, but that's a G, and G is an A. If you know anything about how the keys work, there's five. The keyboard is broken down into here. I'll focus. 
keyboard is broken down into five columns of eight rows. So one through four, or one through five is a row, Q through T is a row, and so forth. And then over here, the same thing is a row. That's how you get eight rows. And then your five columns are one, two, three, four, five. And then they continue over here going back up the rows. Now, if I have my five columns mixed up, then I will get swapping. Like, G is A and A is G. Well, I may have flipped those two around. And let's just check and see. Is S and F and F and S? And does D actually work? So let's get this up here. So I'm going to use that one because I know that one is F. So I'm going to go G. G is giving me A. A is giving me G. F is giving me S. S is giving me F. D is working. Q is giving me T, T is giving me Q, R is giving me W, W is giving me R, E is working. 5 is giving me nothing. B is giving me space, space is giving me, is that a B? Yeah, that's a B. Period is giving me N, N is giving me period. Then we come up here, 0 is giving me 6, 6 is giving me 0, 7 is giving me 9, 9 is giving me 7, 8 is working. For some reason or another, this row 1 through 5 is not working. Z is C. Okay, that's right. Shift is V. V is shift. Alright, so we got a, a little problem here. We got, for one reason or another, my columns are switched and I have at least one row not working. So I have to chase them down. P is Y, Y is P. Yep, we'll figure that out and then I will fix that and then I will show you what I did. Alright, so I did some work on it. First off, I did realize I had twisted this one right here. That's why the keys were flipped around. But I've been going back and forth trying to chase down the reason why the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4 one, two, three, four, and five don't work. And for one reason or another, this line right here, even though I, I used my multimeter and I pulled the keyboard apart and I tested all the leads, and it's working. If I press one, a signal is going to there, but the computer is not registering that number one is being pressed. It's not seeing that row, one through five. So I'm starting to think it might be something else on the board. The diode seems to work. The diode that's right in that line there, right here. This diode going to here seems to work. I don't see how me, if I, by adding this connector right here, that goes to the memory, I don't see how that would have affected the keys because the memory is working. So, if anybody has any idea why, when it's not membrane, why one through five doesn't work, Please let me know in the comments because I am confused. This is where it connects. I'm getting power. I'm getting a signal to that. If I press the one, it comes. These two right here are the one. The column and row for one. And if I press one, power gets through to from here to here, which means it's making the connection. So the membrane is working. And the power goes through the diode. I can send power through the diode. But I don't know where it's going after that. So it doesn't seem to be going working right. I don't see anything else wrong in here. I checked to make sure I didn't have to bridge anything. I didn't shore anything. Everything else is working. It's just that. So if anybody has a clue, leave me a message in the comments and maybe we can fix this one. So this one's ready to go. It's just fixed. It just needs to figure out why that key is not working. And I'm not going to put another membrane in because I do not believe it's a membrane. Because as I said, I can set the signal down the column and get it back to row or vice versa, whatever one they're called. And get it back when I press the one. So I do know that we use my continuity. I can run a voltage through there and it does come back. So like I said, let me know in the comments and maybe you can help me with this one. So this one is to be continued. 
We have one more left, and I'm going to hit that one next. Hopefully, that will be done soon. Hope you enjoyed me rebuilding these things and rambling on as I do them. All right, so I didn't want to give up on this thing here, so I asked some advice on the Sinclair form about why this one pin wasn't working. And they said, take your multimeter and just chase down D1, which is that line, and see if there's any breaks. So I did, and it seems to be working. Then I realized, then I checked something. You see here, I'm, gonna try, I'm trying to do this so you can see it too. This is D2, D3, and so on. If I touch D2, those two right there, it's continuity, 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 continuity. It's there. I'm just not touching too well. See. These are the ends of the diodes, and then this is the pins for the wires going out to the keyboard membrane. But D1, the one that's not working, no continuity. It appears on closer inspection, and I'm going to see if I can get it close up in here for you. I don't know if it's going to refocus for me. Uh, it's not going to refocus. But it appears that there's like supposed to be a solder blob slash trace between these two. Either on this side or the other side, which isn't there now. So I gotta fix that. And that should fix my issue. And then I can say this one is done. So I'm waiting for the soldering iron to heat up and I'm going to do that and that'll fix that. Alright, and so as you can see, I connected them now. So there is no possibility of there not being continuity to that. So now what I'm going to do is I'll put it back together and I'll take it over and give her a shot on the bed, on the table. Alright, so we're back over here at the table, or at the bed, the desk. And you may notice it looks a little different since a few seconds ago when I showed you the other video. When I came in the studio this morning we reorganized some things and I gave the ZX an actual really good desk. So I got it over here now. Let's just see if that one key is going to work now. This monitor is not as good as the LCD monitor, but I like this monitor because it will take the RF output coming out of here and it converts it to composite and then has a video out so I can plug it into the capture card. So this one does all my translation for me. So here we go. I've got this and I'm just going to see. Look, it's working. Yeah, ignore the... Oh wow, I was on the wrong channel. Check that out. <laughs> That worked good. That error. Yeah, I know. Okay, so yeah, we fixed it. I think I need to put some deoxid or contact cleaner down here just to clean these up because they got a little noise to them. But yep, they're all working. Now I have another issue now. Well, first off, before I do the other issue, let's just make sure the 16 can works on this. Actually, with my plug mister, I installed 16K on it. Come on, Lily. Get your stuff together. Now, I believe it's 163889 or 888 plus 163889 times 256. The other way around. So, let's find, let's find out what we got here. Print peak 16388 times. 256 plus peak 16389 and we get should get 32k what did I do wrong try that again I did something wrong print peak 16388 oh plus 256 times Peak one six three eight nine. That's better. Three two seven six eight. So we have sixteen K installed in here. And as I showed on the previous video, if I was to put a sixteen K pack in here, it would override what's in here. So I can actually put in the memo pack with the daisy chain in the back and have thirty two K on it. And it will turn off the internal sixteen K. So that's good. Now I have another issue too. So that one, number two, or number one is done, it just needs some rubber feet. My original ZX81 I have over here, the one I put the LED in, I noticed this morning when I was testing my new setup here, one of the keys isn't working. 
the E, the 3, the D, and the X. Basically the same idea again. Is I have, this time I have a column. The center column is not making connection. So 3, E, S, X, 8, I, K, and M are not making connection. The center column on that 5-pin wire is not making connection, the center wire. So this has got to be ripped open to figure out what it is. But we're getting there. So two down, one more to go. Frank computers aren't going to get fixed. There won't be a four-system rebuild. Well, Frank computer can get fixed eventually. And like I said, just to show you. Frank Pooter, Frank and Pooter may get the composite mod and then get a modified Texas Instruments keyboard hooked up to it because it's Frank and Pooter, so Frank and Pooter should not should be Frank and Pooter. But there we go. Number one is done. Number three is done. Number two is sitting over here waiting to get fixed. That again, I think that was a keyboard also, but I'm going to put some memory on it. And then I got to fix the memory on this one here, which is the desk one. So here, here's number three up here. I, mean, I had a, I made a label for it. I don't like it. It's way too big. I'm going to make some smaller labels that say 16K. So there we go. That's it. Have a good day.